right on the first. When upon life's billows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God had done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God had done. Are you ever burdened with the load of care? Does the cross seem heavy? You are called to bear. Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God had done. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you it's well done so. Count your many blessings, every can buy your reward in heaven, your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God had done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God had done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God had done. Page number 89, let's do it as well with my soul. Page 89. All right, on the first. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when soft grows like sea billows roll,
Day. Thank you for being back at the Lord's house. And uh, boy, I'm looking forward to getting back into our Wednesday night Bible study here this evening. It has been a month since we've been able to be back in Romans, so looking forward to that. Um, don't forget, this Saturday is the uh, baby sprinkle uh, there at the Wilson's house. So, ladies, if you're going to be participating, uh, they need to let Abby and Miss Terry know at this point. Yes, Miss Terry. Yes. Okay, so we got babysitters. Gabby and Adriana will be taking care of babysitting from 11:30 till it's over. So, if that's something you need, it's available. Amen. All right. Um, let's talk about prayer requests this evening. As usual, let's continue to pray for our leadership uh, in our county, state, country. And always, let's remember the nation of Israel as we pray and ask the Lord to bless them. Uh, let's pray for our missionaries and uh, their mission field and ask the Lord to bless them. Also, continue to be prayerful in regards to uh, junior church and the nursing home and AFAN, these ministries that the Lord lets us uh, participate in, we thank the Lord for them, and so let's pray about those. Um, hey man, I accidentally got this one on twice, but let's remember Miss Brandy's stepmother. Uh, Carla mentioned her on Sunday. Let's pray for her and ask the Lord to help her. Also, let's remember Caitlin. I've got Caitlin job here. Did that get worked out? Not yet, but let's continue to pray. And uh, let's ask the Lord to uh, reveal his will and take care of that. Amen. Uh, good to have you here tonight. Amen. Uh, let's remember Miss Angela Bevins. I also meant to put Seth as well, uh, but they both had a sleeve, I think, on their stomach, that surgery. Uh, doing pretty good overall, just... Um, hungry amen that's what they that's what they keep saying so uh, that's to be expected amen uh, but let's pray for them I don't think they're too awful sore and let's pray that uh, this works out for brother Seth especially he's got a goal in order to be able to have another surgery uh, hernia surgery so let's pray for him too okay remember Jeremy Coomer um, he's still home doing okay as far as we know weak okay let's pray for him and uh, ask the Lord to help him. Um, and Diana Smith. I don't know who this is. Do you, this, is this you? I don't know who. I don't know why this is on here. I forget. But uh, let's pray for her. Amen. Do you know Diana Smith? Who? Is that Miss Tina's neighbor? I believe it is. How's she doing? What? Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you for that. And good call, Tyler. It's been a minute since I've seen that name. Let's remember her. Pray for Miss uh, Miss Terry's checkups. How did those go? Did those all go okay? Good. Let's give Lord praise on that as well. Amen. Amen. Um, now, Brother Jeff Whittle. He did not get a great report today. So, uh, as I mentioned on Sunday... Uh, Sunday night, he, he spoke to me about uh, having to have a uh, his VNS changed, his vagus nerve stimulator. Of course, that's because Brother, uh, Brother Jeff deals with, with seizures and such. And so uh, he went in this morning, and this is what Jennifer told me. She said that they're going to have to rethink what they're doing in regards to his VNS, his vagus nerve stimulator. And I said, what does that mean? 
and what are they going to do? And she said that uh, essentially his stimulator wasn't doing any good, wasn't helping. And I've heard of that in the past, how that a vagus nerve stimulator don't always stop seizures for some people. And so uh, it says that they're going to have to do an MRI and some other tests to see what's going to be best to benefit him. That's how I'm understanding what she said. So I uh, need to pray for Brother Jeff Whittle, okay? Um, they're going to try to figure something else out, and so let's pray for him. Um, as we pray, there's Jeremy Coomer the second time. Y'all bear with me. Struggle's real tonight, amen. Um, but let's pray for Miss Anita. Did she um, Did she go in for that? Yeah, I brought her in this morning. Did it go well? What's his name? Junior. Uh, in my mind, I was thinking Junior. All right. Let's pray for Luke's dad, James, and um, and the issues he's been having. And let's give Lord praise. Miss Anita was very worried about her anxiety, and so it sounds like it went well. Amen. There's Carla's Nana again. We'll, we're going to pray for her. Who? I, 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 sure enough. Sure enough. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. You saved the day, Carla. Look here. Look here. I am fixing it now. You know, sometimes I have to shush you because you scream at me from the point. See, right now you don't even hear what I'm saying because you're talking so much. We love you, Carla, don't we, church? Amen. Golly. Miss Brandy, God bless you. God bless you. You deserve like a trophy. You know that? You do. Amen. Okay. Brandy with a Y. And we're going to move on. Edith Furkin. Uh, how's your aunt? Right. Now, they said that they were going to, let me remember, Miss Angela gave us a report Sunday. What are they going to do, give her a pacemaker? Yes. <coughs> well, let's pray that her surgery goes well and that this resolves her problems. It's nice when the doctors say, here's your problem, this will resolve it, and then they're better. And that's what we need to pray, that the Lord will do that. Let's pray for Derek Parks, a uh, lost man. Miss Angela's husband, and we'd like to see him uh, receive the Lord as a Savior. Amen? Amen? So let's pray for Derek tonight when we pray. Remember Rachel Chancery? Uh, uh, I believe it's uh, Friday. Friday. Um, she's going to have some tests run. Yeah, they're going to do a CT to see if they've, uh, uh, to see if the chemo was done. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's pray that she gets a good report on what the chemo has done. And let's remember Heather and the baby. Um, what's the due date? Yeah. When are you due, my honey? <laughs> August 11th. August 11th. Okay. I'm going to try to remember that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ain't that sad? That's sad. Hush. You hush. Um, okay, so let's, I'm not a total uh, looney tune. So um, as y'all know, Heather, this is our third child, and uh, she, she, was, she had C-sections on our first two children, Josiah and Ada. And they're hard on ladies. For those of you that's had them, they're just hard on you. And we have ambitions. Uh, my wife especially, to be able to have this child uh, naturally, right? And so what we've done, and we had this ambition with Ada and kind of just got duped by some doctors. It was never in the picture, and we just wasn't pleased. 
we have finally found a doctor in Lexington that essentially has said this, as long as you progress, as long as you go into labor, as long as the baby's safe, there's nothing wrong with it, and we'll try to promote that. But if there's ever a point where it's looking like we just don't have a choice, we'll do the C-section. That's exactly what we've been looking for, and we thank the Lord. Heather was able to find that. And so doctors in Lexington, Heather got to go see the doctor this past Monday, I think. And um, Heather loved her, and I thank the Lord for that. So I want to bear our burden to our church and say, if you don't care, pray for her. Um, again, those C-sections was hard on her. And it's just, we want the Lord, if it's his will, uh, to give us a natural birth this time and pray that that's more healthy on the baby and such. And so pray for her. Do you care to? Amen. And obviously, you know, it's, August nearly, and she's pregnant, and it's fun right now. Amen. <laughs> she's hot and ready, and so pray that the Lord will uh, hot and ready like Caesar's, y'all. Come on, pizza, pizza. But um, I need to stop, don't I? <laughs> I wasn't. I was not. Did you see, did you hear my uh, Carla debacle? Did you get, okay, maybe you should go back. That was, you're a blessing, Carla, you know what? Oh, I know you know. Amen. Amen. So pray for Heather and the baby and just ask the Lord to give us a healthy baby and a healthy birth, okay? That's our prayer. And be praying for Youth Rally, July 17th through the 20th. Uh, looking forward to that. Okay. Anybody else with a prayer request for us? Okay. Okay, Carla. Let's remember Tabitha's great nephew who is a preemie and pray that the Lord will help him. Miss Debbie. Um, yeah, Coy. That's Monday. You had it Monday. Okay. Let's pray for him. Maybe they'll get these issues resolved. And the family of Robin Minton. Coy Harris going to have to have real serious back surgery. Let's pray about that. I did not. I, I had you sent it after I printed this. So go ahead. And How old was the girl, you think? Mid to late 30s, young lady. Where is she from? Lexington. Lexington was found today having been murdered, her and her roommate. And these were uh, sisters of a close friend, I think, of Jessica. These, these close. So let's pray about that. They're pretty shook as you can imagine right now, and uh, it's wild stuff. Let's remember that. Somebody else. Miss Michelle. You 
got it. Remember, Brother Allen, let's pray these tests come back better <clears throat> with these labs. Amen. Miss Terry. Yeah, I forgot all about me sending you that. Let's remember Bella Whitehead. She broke her humorous and... Uh, I saw she was doing pretty good considering, but she had to go to, or was scheduled an appointment with Shriners, but I hadn't seen whether she did. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Let's pray for her and give the Lord praise. That could have been, uh, could have been serious. So, amen. Anybody else? Miss Tay. Praise, amen, church. Anybody else? Prayer requests, praise report. Yeah, go ahead. That's good. Thank you, Tony. Katie. How you spell Mannix? Okay. Let's pray for Mannix. Wow. Serious stuff. Amen. Remember him. Somebody else had a hand up. Yeah, Brother Rob. Let's remember this, Robert's niece and nephew and uh, sister. Pray for that situation. Pretty serious, amen. Anybody else before we pray? We've got much to pray about tonight, amen. I thank the Lord for brothers and sisters in Christ that we can uh, bear one another's burdens. That's what we are called to do. So let's be sure to do that. As I mentioned, remember Junior Church? There's a pile of kids, seems like, tonight, and all those who are serving and working downstairs, uh, doing the Lord's work. Amen. So let's pray for them tonight, that the Lord would strengthen them and touch those uh, young people that's riding. And let's just remember one another. Everybody that can and is able, let's gather in around the altar together. Uh, if, if you're going to remain in your seat, that's fine by all means. Just help us pray. And go to the Lord in prayer together in one mind, in one accord. Let's take our time and spend some time talking to the only one that can do anything about these prayer requests. We can talk to each other about it. We can think about it. But at the end of the day, none of that does any good unless we take it to the Lord in prayer. So let's just remember these prayer requests as we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this church. Thank you for my church family. Thank you, Lord, for each and every person that's made their way out to be here tonight. And I pray, God, I pray that you would bless this evening service. Use your word in the hearts and minds of each and every person that's here. 
touch, Lord, our leadership and lead those in the positions of leadership in our county, Russell County, in our state of Kentucky, Lord, and across the United States of America, be with our president and leadership in that regard. And, Lord, touch the nation of Israel and bless them is our prayer. Lord, be with our missionaries on their mission field. We pray you bless them. And, Lord, give them a success and, Lord, prosperity and protection. Lord, we pray that they'd see so saved. Touch Junior Church tonight, all the workers and students, Lord, and uh, those participating, Lord, in our church on these grounds tonight. I pray you bless them and help them. And, Lord, comfort them and, Lord, sow seed that will last forever. Be with the nursing home ministry. Lord, we pray that those doors be open back soon. And, Lord, touch AFAN as well. God, be with Miss Brandy's stepmother. God, we pray, uh, Lord, that you would help her as she continues to recover. And, Lord, we're praying you give Miss Caitlin a good job that be in your will. Lord, that would be conducive, Lord, to living for you and serving you. We pray that you do it quickly in your will according to your time. Be with Miss Angela Bevins, Lord, uh, and Seth with their surgeries they have. We pray, Lord, to give them good recovery and touch them. Be with Brother Jeremy. I pray, Lord, you'd help him with his weakness. Be with Diane Smith. We thank you for the praise report. Seems like, Lord, she's doing good. We thank you for that. Be with Miss Terry and, Lord, continue to give her good checkups. We thank you for the good ones she got again. And pray that you continue to bless her. Uh, Lord, with good checkups, and we'll give you praise for it. Be with Brother Jeff, Lord. Uh, they don't know what they're going to do, but God, you know exactly what they need to do, and we pray that you lead them and guide them and direct them as you see fit. Be with Anita. We thank you for the good report, and pray, Lord, you be with James with the spells he's been having. Touch Miss Edith, Lord, we pray on July the 14th that she'd have a good uh, surgery, and Lord, that that would resolve her issues, and well, we're praying you save Derek Parks, Lord, wherever he is, and Lord, whatever he's doing right now. I ask, Lord, that maybe your spirit, Lord, would just, uh, would just, uh, Lord, show up and remind him, Lord, of his need of salvation, and Lord, draw him uh, to you, God. Be with Rachel Chancery. I pray you touch her with her uh, report in regards to her chemo. We ask you to give her a good report, and Lord, we're praying you'd be with Heather and the baby. Give us a good healthy, Lord, baby, and a good, healthy birth. And, Lord, I pray that you bless our efforts as we seek, uh, Lord, this different doctor and different plan, uh, that you bless it, Lord, and honor it. Touch youth rally, Lord. Touch the uh, uh, Young Adults Conference, God, and have your will with that. Or be with Tyler. We pray you touch uh, his test, Lord, that he had, that they'd find something that they can help him with in regards to his symptoms. Lord, be with uh, uh, Lord, Carla's friend who has a great nephew that's prematurely born, touch him. Be with Coy Harris. We pray, Lord, that his back surgeries, Lord God, would uh, Lord resolve his problems and that he'd be able to get back to work eventually. Lord, be with Robin Minton's family. I pray, Lord, you touch them. Be with Robert and his sister and niece and nephew. Lord, touch that situation, God. Be with Mimi McGowan, Lord, and the cancer. I pray, God, you'd heal her. Lord, I pray that you be with that situation over in Lexington with the murder of, of these two ladies, God. I just can't imagine what folk are feeling. But, Lord, we pray that you would uh, that you'd intervene, Lord, and do a work there. Pray, God, you be with Alan Bradshaw and these tests. Lord, we're praying that, Lord, you'd resolve it and give him a good report. Thank you, Lord, for the good report with Bella. We thank you, Lord, that it uh, didn't require surgery. And, Lord, she's going to be able to heal. We do pray you touch her. Or be with Kyle. Lord, we thank you for his good report and pray, Lord, you continue to help him. Be with Mannix, Lord, and this surgery he's going to be having, God. I don't really understand what it all is, but, Lord, you do. We're praying you touch him. And, Lord, be with the unspoken prayer requests, Lord. I pray you touch each and every person that's here tonight. Lord, bless and help and touch the situations that, Lord, we may not be comfortable speaking it out loud here, but, God, you know what they are, and, Lord, you care. And so, God, I do pray once again that you touch it, lead and guide and direct as you see fit. We love you. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you for praying with me.
<clears throat> All right, Romans chapter 13, Romans chapter 13. Sure is good to be back together with you. And I thank the Lord for his goodness and his grace. I thank the Lord for the good day we had Sunday. Uh, had a good service Sunday morning and just got to rejoice with our church family together and spend some time praising him and worshiping him together. And then Brother Marcus showed up Sunday night and was a great blessing to our church. And then Brother Chris put on a great show with the fireworks. It was just a good day, amen? Yep. And we thank the Lord for that. Now tonight, <clears throat> I'm back in Romans 13, and it's been a minute. Like I said, it's been one month uh, since we've been here. And the Lord, uh, by inspiration of God, Apostle Paul, changes gears a little bit. And there in chapter 12, you know, he's dealing with... Um, the, the, he starts off that chapter dealing with the unworthiness of saints. I mean, we don't deserve how much goodness God has bestowed upon us. Amen. And he's just so wonderful and so gracious and so, I mean, just good uh, to his people. And uh, that's what Paul begins. He's, he's just describing for us and revealing to us that if it had not been for God's mercies, we couldn't do nothing and so because of his mercy, we should give him everything. It says, be a living sacrifice there in verse 1. And then there in verse uh, about 4 or 5, he starts to transition to dealing with uh, that we should be a united people. And for the remainder of the chapter, he's dealing with uh, our conduct, Christian conduct, and how that we're supposed to act in regards to uh, Christians with Christians, believers with believers, and believers with non-believers. Uh, Paul says, bless them that uh, persecute you, bless and curse not. And that's, that's, a, that's a blessing right there, amen, that's wonderful. Because, uh, you know, we live in a day where <laughs> we're taught that if somebody comes at you, then you go back at them with twice the amount of force, and that's not the biblical uh, mandate that, that's been given to the believer. Amen? I mean, God has instructed us through His Word to be a peaceful people. As a matter of fact, He tells us that in this chapter. He says that if it's, if it's at all possible, verse 18, as much life in you, live peaceably with all men. Amen? Like, give it everything you got, whereas most of the time Christians are the worst to have chips on their shoulder constantly at war, constantly turmoil, constantly uh, contention. Amen. Contention. Which only comes by pride, the Bible says. Pride. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. I hear of things and people who are, who are Christians by, by profession and they are living their life with a grudge against a family member, you know, a brother, a sister. And it's just like, I mean, look, I'm not going to stand up here before y'all and act like I ain't never had my feelings hurt. Haven't we all? Haven't we all? Amen. Like we all have, okay? The problem is not when we get our feelings hurt. The problem is when we won't let it go. We hold on to that. And so Paul deals with these things. And Paul addresses that we are to be we ought to have a higher standard for how we act and it ought not be the same as the world. And then in chapter 13, he changes gears and starts talking about how we are to act in regards to government. And not only government, but leadership in general. Let's read it again as a good reminder and I'm going to try to get through what I've got today. Verse 1, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, 
you must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For for this cause pay ye tribute also. For they are God's ministers, attending continually unto this very thing. Render therefore to all their duties tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, and honor to whom honor. That will be all the reading this evening. Amen. Amen. Government. Government. How are Christians supposed to act towards their government? There's a proper response. And this is not just something that Paul pulls out of nowhere. This is the authority on the passage when it comes to government. But but Peter deals with some things too. I want to read that to you quickly. In 1 Peter 2 he says, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Uh, Chapter 2 verse 13 says, Whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. <clears throat> for so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. It is an instruction by God through two different apostles, okay, by inspiration of God according to his word, that we, as God's people, should be consciously making an effort, are you ready for this? To be submissive to our government. We are not called to be resolutionary. We are not called to be insurrectionists. We are not called to be rebels. That's not the mandate given to us by God. I know where I'm at. I know who I'm preaching to. I'm preaching to the freest, most spoiled people in the world because I am one. Here in the United States of America, we are spoiled rotten. That's right. And we, look here, listen to me when I say this. We look at this passage and we immediately start thinking about our submission to our country and whether or not we agree with whether or not we should submit to. Think about this. This passage is written to every Christian. In every part of the world, in every time from its beginning. Think about the Christians that were murdered by Nero. You say, why didn't those Christians revolt against that government? Well, because they're not supposed to. You say, well, Brother Shard, are you saying that when that government... came up against those people for their faith and started killing them because of what they believed in, were they just supposed to hand themselves over? Yes. Yeah. You say, now brother Caleb, I just don't agree with that. Well then you just don't agree with the Bible. Now, here's the truth. Pay attention. There's a statement of obedience that we dealt with here in this passage we saw how that the Bible tells us that there are ordaining causes in regards to leadership there in verse 6. How that the Bible says that there is no power but of God, but that uh, the powers that be are ordained of God. And we know that the powers that be are based off of God's understanding of what a people deserves and what a people uh, is, is, is doing to themselves. You reap what you sow. Amen. Amen. Uh, You know, I'm not 100% sure about the voting system of the United States of America anymore, but this is what I'll say. I'll say if you vote in a man that runs your country in the the ground, guess what God's going to do? He's going to let you. Amen. Amen. If you vote in a man that that, that goes against everything that the Bible says or does, God's going to let you. Do you see what I'm saying? God's going to ordain that based off of 
the people that, that make their bed. If you make your bed, God's going to say lay in it. You say, where do you get that principle from? Book of uh, 1 Samuel. <clears throat> Again, God's people said, we want us a king. We want a man king, God. All these other powerful countries have their own king. <clears throat> and we don't have a king. And we want a king. And Samuel goes to God and God says, fine, I'll give them a king. And he does. He gives them Saul. And Saul, by all accounts, was a good man. But guess what he wasn't? He was not God's will for those people according to what God's uh, uh, original plan was. But those people said, we want a king. God gave them Saul. And Saul ultimately apostatized, uh, disobeys God, and hurts the nation of Israel and his family and lineage because he should have never been put in that position. Amen? Amen. What is that? Well, that's God ordaining the powers that be. Now, when it comes to powers, we think of government. <coughs> we think of parents. You know, here's some powers and authorities. Your employer, uh, your church leadership, and ultimately, God and His Word. Amen? Amen. Amen. These are the powers that be. And the Bible here tells us that he is in control of those things and, and we see an omission of conflict. There's no such thing as powers that exist without God's permission. He is sovereign. He is in control. Now, I'm not a fatalist. You say, what's a fatalist? A fatalist believes that God has already determined every single thing that's ever happened and there ain't a thing we can do about it. A fatalist believes that God literally has ordained for people to sin. We don't believe that, do we? This young lady over in Lexington that was murdered, we don't believe God chose that to happen, do we? Huh? He has allowed mankind to make his decisions and God is still sovereign and still in control and still brings his ultimate will to pass in spite of man. Amen. His, his ability to still be God and still let us make our own decisions is His sovereignty. Amen. And so we, we're not fatalists. We don't believe that God is choosing people to be wicked, choosing for people to be wicked. But at the same time, we know that the Bible clearly says that God is power. And there is no power but of God. But now we see this outcome that is cautioned in verse 2. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. Now, here's the fact. I don't agree with a lot of things that goes on around this country. Why? Because I've been born and raised in the freest nation in the world. In a nation where speech is, is free. And I can say and believe what I want according to the constitution of the nation that I live in. In this nation, I can disagree. I am allowed to. But you know, that's not the case in every nation. You are not allowed in communist nations to publish or produce anything that is criticizing that nation's leadership. You are not allowed... You will be punished. You may be imprisoned if you come out and produce media or literature in any capacity that says you disagree with the leadership of that nation. But here in America, we can. Nevertheless, there are things <coughs> that is, even in this nation, not allowed to be done or performed in this nation. And as a citizen of this nation, I am to be obedient. I am to be submissive. And if I am not submissive, and if I am not obedient, then I am to be willing to suffer the consequences of my actions because the Bible tells me that I am going to suffer those consequences if I am disobedient. Do you understand? Pretty simple, ain't it? Pretty simple. You know, I like, to, I like to deer hunt and I like to fish. And all my life, rock bass has not had a limit on them. 
And a year or two ago, they put a 15 uh, uh, possession limit on, on rock bass, red eye. And that's what I was raised to catch and eat, and I love it. And it aggravates me to no end that when I get my 15 lemon, I got to start calling them. Why ain't nobody going to catch you? You're right, probably. Nobody even knows hardly what rock bass is in red eye and whether or not you've got a 15 limit, and, and it's just silly. But that's the law. I'm not going to stand before you today and act like I ain't never broke a law, but I'm going to tell you this. I ain't always been real familiar with this passage either. And when God reveals to you truth, guess what you've got to do? Submit. Amen. You say, but what if I don't agree with it, Brother Caleb? If they find out, you've got to pay the consequences. Amen. There is a caution, an outcome that is cautioned. <laughs> then we see a subjection to guidance. We saw first off a statement of obedience. Then we see a subjection to guidance. I want you to think of a couple of things that we see here. I want you to notice first of all that there's a standard for leadership. Not only is there a standard, okay, for Christians, but here in this passage there is listed a standard for how leadership is to conduct itself. Verse 4, the Bible says, For he is the minister of God, to thee for good. If thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Right there it is. <laughs> what does the Bible say? Is Leadership is supposed to be actively participating in protection and punishment. That's their whole existence. That's what they're supposed to be doing. Now, whether or not they are or not, we really don't have a whole lot of control over it. But if I was in a position of leadership, and I'm not against somebody participating in leadership in regards to the realms of government and state. Amen? Nevertheless, there's a standard here for how they are supposed to be acting and what they're supposed to be participating in. <clears throat> but we also see not only leadership's standard, we, we see a citizenship's standard. Paul establishes that Christians are not to be associated with insurrectionists and revolutionaries. Why? Why does Paul care about even saying these things? Well, who is Paul? Well, Paul was a Jew. Paul was not just any Jew. He was a Pharisee. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees, he said. And do you know what the Jews were known for? Insurrection and revolution. Constantly, constantly trying to build an, an uprising to overthrow because their entire existence revolved around their national power. And in this day, they were constantly looking back at when David was king and Solomon was king and wishing they could get back to that place where the nation of Israel was the world power. And their whole desire for a Messiah was so that God would send a man down that was so powerful that he would lead this nation back into world power. That's all they thought about. That's all they worried about. They wanted power. And Paul said, Christians, that ain't got a thing to do with what you're to be. Look at verse 4. Or rather, verse 5, he said, Wherefore, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. That's verse 5. And then there in verse, uh, verse 3, I meant to read that too. For rulers are not a terror to good works. There's the protection. They're not a terror to good works. They're not going to abuse you for good works, not supposed to at least, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good. And thou shalt have praise of the same. Thou shalt have praise of the same. The book of Matthew and chapter 23. The Bible says this. <coughs> excuse me. Verse 1. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and his disciples saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. And rather, that observe and do. So let's pause for a second. Jesus Christ said the Pharisees 
and the scribes are in a position of leadership. Be obedient to them. Now the end of that verse says, But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. You know what Jesus said? He said, What they're saying is good and right. Do it. Now, if you look at what they do, you're going to see their corruption and you're going to want to be like them. Don't be like them, but do what they say. Why? Because they're in a position of leadership. Jesus Christ said that. I watched a video recently where somebody went through and was, <clears throat> this was the question. They said, uh, what major athletic sports affiliation would you guess that these people belong to? And it started, they started to read all these different uh, uh, criminal actions that had been committed by multiple people. And when he got done, he said it was, it was not a major athletic affiliation. They said this was our political leadership of the United States of America. Governors, senators, things of that nature. He said, Brother Cub, do we have to listen to them if they're so wicked and heinous? Jesus said that they needed to listen to the scribes and Pharisees. So, yeah, we do. I'm talking about the standard as a citizen. Be obedient to the law. Be obedient to the regulations. Do what your leadership tells you to. You say, I just don't agree with it. Move to China. I wonder how fun that will be in red China. Because guess what? Christians in red China have to be obedient too. Christians in Iraq and Iran, Islamic terroristic leadership are supposed to be doing exactly what we're doing. I just don't think we should complain there as much as we do. Help me. Help me. Like, wake up call right here. The Bible's still true. And what Paul says is he says, be submissive. Subject yourselves. Be subject to them. This is the citizenship standard. We have a duty as citizens to be an example in our conduct for how we're to act. Why do martyrs exist? Because God does not teach us in His Word insurrection, insurrectionists to be insurrectionists and revolutionaries. That's why martyrs exist. And martyrs get blessed above everyone. Martyrs are put up on a pedestal by God for their ability and willingness to submit to martyrdom. Why? Because of their willingness to be an example to the world. And just so y'all know, nobody has a harder time with this stuff than me. I am the worst. Heather, I think rules are meant to be broken so often times and Heather's like, now honey, Let's just do it. And I'm like, well, I just don't think they're right. And I think I ought to be the one to show them that they're not right. And so I'm just going to, you see, and, and before it's all said and done, I'm like, what's wrong with me? You know what the Bible tells me? Submit. Why? So that others will see your willingness to do so. To be an example. To be a witness that is the avenue by which Christians reach the world. The citizenship standard, but ultimately there is a membership standard. Membership of what? Well, his church. I'm a, I'm a member of the body of Christ. And there are some laws that contradict that. And guess what? In instances where the law contradicts the word and the will of God, I have a duty. Do you agree? Say amen if you agree. <laughs> In the book of Acts chapter 4, Peter and John is being obedient to the will of God and preaching in spite of what others say. In verse 13, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. They took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. 
and beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside into the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do with these men? For they indeed a notable miracle, uh, they, for that indeed a no, notable miracle hath been done by them and is manifest to all that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them, that they speak henceforth no man in, his, in this name. <laughs> and they called uh, them and commanded them to speak, uh, uh, to not speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Notice what Peter and John said. They answered, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. Verse 20. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So this is what Peter and John said. Okay, they were told, essentially, shut your mouths, stop speaking this name, do not do what you're doing, cease, cease from participating in the ministry that you're serving in. And Peter and John said, look, whether or not this is of God or not, you're going to have to judge, but we can't help ourselves. We have to speak what we have seen and what we had heard. Verse 21, So when they further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was showed. In other words, when <laughs> their authorities <clears throat> commanded them to do something, that disagreed with what God had instructed them to do, Jesus Christ specifically, they had an obligation to say, look, I'm going to do what I have to do. And what you have to do to me because of it is up to you and I'm willing and ready to receive whatever uh, uh, ramifications come for doing what I know i got to do. I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to try to kill nobody. I'm going to let you handle me for doing what I know I've got to do. You say, Brother Shrey, I just don't believe that. What did Jesus do when they came for him? Who had the authority to call down legions of angels to wipe the face of the earth off and just let them, and as a matter of fact, healed the man's ear that Peter cut off, trying to cut a man's head off. He wasn't trying to cut his ear off. Jesus healed his ear and gave himself over to them. Why? So that his gospel might be preached across the whole world for all of time. And God forbid we do what we know is right and then suffer the ramifications for it. Yes, there is an obligation to be obedient to God's word. Yes, there is days where the law disagrees with the Word of God and we still have to be obedient to God rather than man. Acts 5.29, Peter says that we ought to obey God rather than men. Well, what God has said is God has said obey man. And if you disobey man, there will be ramifications. And if man tells you to do something or not do something that disagrees with me, then do what I'd have you to do, but you're still going to have to deal with your ramifications. Read the book of Daniel. Now thankfully God intervened in the lives of those Hebrew children and in Daniel's life with those lines, with that burning fiery furnace, but they still had to give themselves over. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about the subjection and how that we are to be subject to the government. Martyrs wouldn't be a thing if God wanted revolutions and insurrectionists. It's so funny too. The people, <laughs> the people that are anti-government the most live off the government more than anybody else. If you're so anti-government, send the check back. Amen? If we're so anti-government, then we shouldn't take a dime from them. That's just right, y'all. You know, all these, all these people that hated, you know, President Trump, I don't think they sent back those stipends we was getting during COVID, did they? 
Come on. We're such hypocrites. We're such hypocrites. We act like this government's just... Now, I am against the IRS. I, I maintain that. Come on. Man. Still against them. Ain't that right, baby? But look here. Look here. God has allowed the government to have its control, and he's told Christians, be obedient and be an example to the world for what a Christian is. And you know what a Christian is? Peaceable, merciful. I said merciful, loving, forgiving, and caring. And then he finishes it off talking about taxes. Taxes. Speaking of the IRS, taxes. I'm going to make a couple statements and I'm going to close. I know we've been about almost 30 minutes, if not, but I can't find anywhere in your King James Bible where a church body is exempted from paying taxes. Don't you throw no rocks at me. I'm just saying something that's true. That being said, I thank God that here in the United States of America we are tax exempted. Amen? Amen. And look, I pray that the church is always protected from tax, having to pay tax. Amen? I do. I think it's wonderful. But what is sad is there will be churches that make a scene, that lawyer up, that fight tooth and nail when they start coming after our money, and they never said a thing about the Ten Commandments being taken down in our public schools. And they never say a thing. They never say a thing when the legalization of selling alcohol became a thing in their community. Amen. I'm talking about churches lose their mind. They're going to lose their ever-loving mind over money. And they ain't preaching the gospel to a single person outside of the four walls that they're sitting in. You know what Jesus said? He said, whose face is on that there coin? They said, well, Caesar's is. He said, well, give Caesar's what's his. You know what ain't a problem to God? Money. It's all His. Every bit of it. Don't even matter. He'll be fine. But you know what? We get so consumed over money. I know an individual right now. And they got so much money, I mean, it'd probably scare me to know. (laughs) And it's all they talk about. And they've raised and saved and worked their hind end off to build this giant amount of money and they cannot take a dime of it with them and they cannot buy another second of life when their time comes. Pay your taxes. Pay your taxes. I'm against the IRS because I pay my taxes and they still give me grief. Aggravates a soup out of me. I mean it. I mean it. I pay taxes on things and I file on things that everybody says you don't even have to file on that don't do it. And I do it anyways. And I'm the one getting dead gum audited. But you know what I'm going to do next time tax season comes? I'm going to pay my taxes. I'm going to file on everything I'm supposed to file on. To a T. I'm going to do it right. I'm going to do it lawfully. Here in the United States we have religious freedom. Free from government control. And we are obligated as a citizen to pay taxes. And, and, and there's just no question about that. There's no debate. I mean, this is clear as water. Paul said, pay tribute to whom tribute is due. I'm afraid sometimes that we are failing to be a testimony in our communities, in our places of employment, in our school systems, in our relationships, our friendships with others, because we have this sense of being 
disobedient, rebellious, defiant, and anti-government. Rebellious. Rebellions is the sin of witchcraft. And that's at all levels. It's not just when a teenager's rebellious. It's when a grown man's rebellious to his authorities. Amen. We need some people today to take the Scripture serious, and especially in regards to government. Look, look, listen. I'm done right here. President Joe Biden is going through some of the hardest things in his life, I believe. I believe he is struggling physically and mentally and I don't believe that he is qualified and I don't believe that he is capable of trying to lead our nation. It's sad. God forbid we walk around running him in the ground. That's our president. As incapable as he may be, that's our president. We ought to pray for him. I don't agree with him on might near everything. But you know what? In the United States, I'm allowed to say that. And if we was in Red China, I wouldn't be. And I would have to be obedient to that. Are you listening to me? Something to think about, ain't it? Something to think about, ain't it? How you doing in regards to your government? your employer, your leadership. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And thank you, Lord, for this congregation. Thank you for letting them be here. I pray, Lord, that, that they saw the word for what it was. And, Lord, that it spoke to their hearts. And